My name is Stephen Howell, and I'm a professor of mechanical engineering at UC Davis at Davis, California. Since 2006, I've performed about 1,700 kinematically aligned tilting orthoplasties. And what I'd like to share with you today is that if you kinematically align the femoral component, which means equal measured resections both distally and posteriorly off the femur, that it greatly simplifies balancing the knee. One of the satisfying things of kinematically aligned tilt knee arthroplasty is that balancing this type of knee has a defined endpoint rather than this chasing the tail problem that you see when you mechanically align. The first step is to kinematically align the femoral component. And when you do that, then if the knees tighten extension and flexion, you remove more tibia. If the knees tighten extension, then you remove more posterior osteophytes, release the posterior capsule, and if you need to, recut the tibia in a little bit less posterior slope. If you're tight in flexion, you can increase the posterior slope of the tibia. If you're tight medial, then first remove medial osteophytes, then recut the tibia in two degrees more varus, and finally, if you need to, medialize the tibia on the tibial component and remove excess bone from the medial side. And if you're tight lateral, just do the reverse. Remove the lateral osteophytes and recut the tibia in two degrees more valgus. We found that you rarely have to recut the femur and rarely have to release the uh, collateral ligaments when doing this technique. So the main advantage of kinematically aligning the femoral component is that it restores the normal obliquity in the level of the joint line, which restores the normal ligament length. And this means we've placed that person's knee back to the way it was when they were 20 or 30 years of age before they've developed arthritis. And so here we can see on the model of the distal, uh, model of the uh, coronal projection, axial projection of the femur, that we want our two bone resections distally and posteriorly to equal one another and equal the thickness of the component after you fact in the wear and the kerf. And this makes these bone resections parallel to the transverse axis in the femur about which the tibia flexes and extends and parallel to the transverse axis in the femur about which the patella flexes and extends and perpendicular to these axes as well. And therefore if the bone resection thicknesses equal one another after you adjust for the kerf and the wear, you will reestablish, assuming the tibia cuts right, the three kinematic axes and maintain the normal length of the collateral ligaments. Now let's look at the consequence of not kinematically aligning the femoral component or not co-aligning the transverse axis in the femoral component in the femur because it often causes an uncorrectable instability that can't be managed with ligament release. And so we've now in these wireframe models placed the femoral component kinematically. All the axes are nicely restored. But look at the consequence if we cut the distal femur in a little bit more valgus, if we put the femoral component in more external rotation, there will be tight medial in extension, loose medial in flexion, and that's a knee that's not balanceable. And look at what happens if we go in the reverse orientation. Cut the femur a little more varus, we're going to be tight lateral in extension. If you internally rotate the femoral component, you're going to be loose lateral in flexion, and this is a knee that the patient won't like because the patella can't figure out which direction to go, nor can the tibia, and the ligaments are getting tight and loose, and the retinacular ligaments are getting tight and loose, and it leads to the situation where no matter what you do, the patella will remain kinematically malaligned. So when you don't co-align these axes, then you've got to do ligament releases to restore motion. And that then sets off that unsatisfying experience of chasing your tail, where you release a ligament, then it gets too loose, then you put in a little more plastic, then you find you're snug again in another position, so then you've got to either release something or change a cut on the femur. You go back and forth, back and forth, until finally you've just uh, ended up with a knee that you're not just as happy with as you'd like. An analogy that sort of helped me is the car analogy, and if you think about it, would you align the axles in your car this way? And so here you can see the front axle is the transverse axis in the femur about which the patella flexes and extends. 
excuse me, the tibia flexes and extends, and the magenta axis in the back is the transverse axis about which the patella flexes and extends, and then the car wants to go straight down the road on the IRE axis of the tibia. And look what happens if you were to, say, damage your car and the mechanic put the tires on in this situation where uh, distally you move the uh, left front tire uh, distal to where it should be and lifted the left front tire up off the ground and so what's going to happen is the front end of the car is going to go in one direction but the back end is going to want to go in another direction and that's what happens when you kinematically align malalign the femoral component is the tibia wants to move one way but the patella wants to move the other way and you get this conflict that can lead to unhappy patients with either stiffness instability or unexplained pain So it's a very simple method for confirming that the femoral component is kinematically aligned and the joint line is restored. And that's measure your bone resections as you do them. Do your two distal cuts first, your two posterior cuts second, and you can then readjust if you need to. So here's a typical varus knee. These are what the bone resection should look like for a femoral component that's 8 millimeters thick. Distal medial cut should be thinner than the others because that's been worn about 2 millimeters. Posterior medial may have a millimeter wear and that's 6 millimeters. And your distal side should be 7, both distally and posteriorly on the lateral side and then that will kinematically align the femoral component. If we look at the valgus knee it's simply the reverse. Your distal medial cuts going to be 5.5, distal lateral is 4, posterior medial 7.5 and posterior lateral is 6. And so you know not, you can't be perfect but if you can get it within a millimeter, millimeter and a half uh, that gives you a pretty good chance at kinematically aligning the knee. So let's go through the alignment algorithm. So if you've kinematically aligned the femoral component and verified it by the bone resections, then if the knee is tight in extension and flexion, then simply remove more tibia. And you can take a parallel cut guide, uh, pin it to the tibia, and walk it down two millimeters. And you'll find two millimeters is about all you have to do. Don't be taking four or five or six off typically. Just go two at a time, and this little fine tuning will lead to a knee that will have better uh, flexion and extension. And you don't want to go back and recut the femur because your principle has been achieved that you have kinematically aligned the femoral component because your bone resections are equal. If the knees tighten extension but not inflection, then According to our in vivo study of the effect of distal femoral resection on passive knee extension, published in the Journal of Arthroplasty, you just remove more posterior osteophytes from the femur. And here you can see the PCL can be nicely preserved with this technique. That's our preference is to do PS uh, posterior cruciate retaining. And then take the osteotome up the back of the femur along the uh, capsule and strip it from the femur uh, off both the medial and lateral side. And sometimes you'll have to manually strip extend the knee and with the components in to uh, breach that mid portion behind a PCL and this almost always gets your knee back out to extension without resecting a distal bone, additional bone from the femur. If the knee is tight in flexion but not in extension then just increase the slope and here you can see this tibial component is a little bit it's booking open or lifting up and so what we'll do is we'll just take the parallel cut guide and we'll lift it up a little bit to up off the anterior and we'll just change the slope two, two, two degrees, three degrees, that's all you need and you'll find that that flexion is much better and uh, you'll end up with a more balanced knee and so again once you've set the femoral component correctly then all these changes are done on the tibial side and we'll simply shave away at about a two degree or three degree increase posterior slope and not taking any more bone off anteriorly uh, but we'll take a little more bone off as we slope posteriorly and change that slope and we can preserve the PCL by leaving a bridge of bone uh, posteriorly where it inserts on the tibia and you don't have to recess the P PCL because the femoral component is kinematically uh, aligned. Now if the knee is tight medial then simply make sure that you've removed your medial femoral and tibial osteophytes and you have to get around medial get deep to that medial collateral ligaments uh, femoral origin 
and remove the tibial osteophytes and then if that doesn't work during your trial reduction then just tilt your cutting block in two to three degrees more varus you can key off the lateral side with an angel wing and again just two to three degrees you don't usually have to go more than that and that will fine tune it give a little bit more of a laxity on the medial side so it's not binding and you'll have a nice symmetric balanced knee throughout the motion arc the final step if you need to is medialize the tibia on the tibial component and you can take away a little bit of bone I don't like to take too much because you don't want to have a medial side collapse but this you can do to pick up a couple millimeters of uh, laxity in the uh, medial ligament uh, to restore balance and you don't have to release the MCL even in the so-called varus knee and finally if the knee is tight lateral then you do the reverse that you did on the medial side make sure you remove the lateral femoral and tibial osteophytes and then recut the tibia in two to three degrees more valgus and you don't have to release the lateral collateral ligament so in conclusion The advantage of kinematic alignment is there's only four surgical steps that you have to keep in mind for balancing the knee when you kinematically place the femoral component. First is confirm that the femoral component is kinematically aligned interoperatively, which is done by measuring your bone resections. Then make sure you remove your medial, lateral, and posterior osteophytes. Release the posterior capsule when flexion contracture is severe. Adjust the obliquity of the tibial cut. Again, if you're tight medial, increase it varus. If you're tight lateral, increase it valgus. And if you're tight in uh, in, in flexion then increase the posterior slope and you don't have to recut the femur you don't have to release the collateral ligaments and finally once you get comfortable with this technique you'll find that balancing the kinematically aligned knee has a defined endpoint and pathway to get there and if the knee is tight in extension and flexion remove more tibia if the knees tight in extension remove posterior osteophytes strip the posterior capsule and occasionally just decrease that posterior tibial slope as long as you don't have tightness and flexion and you'll get a nice uh, extension in the knee without removing additional bone from the femur if the knees tighten flexion increase the posterior tibial slope if it's tight medial remove your medial osteophytes recut the tibia and more varus and lateralize the tibial uh, component on the tibia and if it's tight lateral do the reverse remove the lateral osteophytes recut the tibia more valgus and rarely will we medialize the tibial component And for those with you with the additional interests in kinematic alignment, feel free to go to my website where I have surgical techniques and journal articles and presentations uh, on the web.